morning. God bless you, my friends. This is Pastor Ralph Acevedo from Yeoman's Praise and Worship Center. As you can see, we are not meeting at the church today. And I would imagine that this is the case for many of you as well. I do, however, want to take a little time to share with you from the Word of the Living God. A lot of things are probably different in your life right now than they have been. But I want to remind you that there are a lot of things that are not, that are not different, that have not changed. For example, God hasn't changed one bit. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Bless his holy name. His word is still true and his promises are still sure. At this very moment, there are literally hundreds of thousands of people all around the world that stand in need of a healing touch from the Lord. Our land stands in need of healing. And that is what I would like to talk to you about today. My subject is a God that heals. A God that heals. So if you have your Bible, uh, please turn with me to our text for today. It's taken from the book of Psalms. Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3. And it reads as follows. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Bow your heads with me, if you would, as we look to the Lord in prayer. Father, I do thank you for this opportunity to gather together with your people. And I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will meet with each one of us. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Give us a heart that's open and receptive and that is willing to submit to the authority of your word. Father, I pray that this would be an encouragement to everyone who hears it and that we would grab a hold of your promises by faith. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm talking about healing. And I want to remind you that God is revealed as a healing God in the Old Testament. Our text says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. And as you look at the scriptures, you will find that there are times when God promises to heal us from our diseases, and there are other times when God promises to keep us from getting sick in the first place. For example, Deuteronomy chapter 7 says this, The Lord will keep you free from every disease. He will not inflict on you the horrible diseases you knew in Egypt. And in 2 Kings chapter 20, we read of King Hezekiah, who became terminally ill. And the Lord sent the prophet Isaiah to him with this message. This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. But Hezekiah cried out to the Lord in prayer with many tears and God heard his cry. And he sends the prophet Isaiah back to Hezekiah with this message. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears and I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life. You know, there are many other examples of healing found in the Old Testament. For example, 1 Kings chapter 13 tells us how, how the prophet Elijah raised a widow's death from a son from death. 2 Kings chapter 5 tells us how Naaman, the commander of the king of Syria's army, was healed of leprosy as he obeyed the instructions of the prophet Elijah. 
And in Numbers 21, we're told of how the nation of Israel spoke against God and against Moses. And God sent snakes among the people, and many of the Israelites are bitten, and many die. And Moses intercedes for the people uh, with God, and God says, make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who was smitten, when they look at the bronze snake, they will live. My friends, God has revealed himself as a healer in the Old Testament. But there are many more manifestations of healing found in the New Testament than there are in the Old Testament. So the second uh, thing I want to draw your attention to is that healing was part of the mission of Christ when he came to earth. Healing was one of the things Jesus was best known for. Matthew chapter 4 verses 23 and 24 tells us that Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those uh, having seizures and the paralyzed, and he healed them. And when John the Baptist was in prison, he went through a time when doubt entered his mind. It's recorded for us in Matthew chapter 11. It says, when John heard in prison uh, what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? And Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. I want you to understand, while Jesus walked the earth, he operated in a ministry of healing. So Jesus healed a very large number of people while he walked among us. Have you ever considered the question, how did Jesus heal? Did he always heal in the same way? Now, if you were to go through the four Gospels and, and you took note of the many miracles of healing that Jesus performed, you may be surprised at the number of different ways he did it. And I want us to take a look at some of those right now. As you would imagine, there were times when Jesus, man, he just stretched forth his hand and simply made physical contact with the person who was sick. For example, in Matthew chapter 8, we read that when he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately, he was cured of his leprosy. Another example of this is found in Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 and 15. It says, when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on him. In these two cases, Jesus simply made a general physical contact with those that were sick. However, there were other times when Jesus would touch the specific area of their body that needed healing. A real good example of this is found in Mark chapter 7, 
verses 31 to 35. It says that Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. And there some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged him to place his hand on the man. And after he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put both his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be open. And at this, the man's ears were open, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. In this case, Jesus did not simply uh, make general physical contact uh, with the man. He touched the specific part of the man's body that needed healing. Jesus touched the man's ears so he could hear. Jesus touched the man's tongue and he could speak. We see another example of this in Matthew chapter, chapter 9, verses 27 to 30. There we're told that as Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. And when he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith will it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus specifically touched their eyes so that they could see. Now, there were other times when Jesus spoke and healing took place, even when the sick person wasn't even present. He just spoke the word and it happened. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 8, gives us a good example of this. It says, Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. Verse 13 says that Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Now we see something very similar taking recorded for us in Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. It says, A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. And verse 28 says that Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. See, sometimes Jesus applied a substance to the place in need of healing. We just saw that in the case when Jesus spit and then placed it on the man's tongue. But we see this even more clearly when Jesus spit on the ground and made clay with his saliva and then put the clay on a man's eyes. That's recorded for us in John chapter 9 verses 6 through 7. It says, when he has said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated scent. And so he went and washed and came back 
see. See, I'm talking about different ways that Jesus healed people. Sometimes Jesus looked past the physical need and saw the spiritual cause of the problem and rebuked it, bringing about the healing. An example of this is found in Luke chapter 9, verse 42, where we're told that as the boy came forward, the demon knocked him to the ground and threw him into a violent convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the evil spirit and healed the boy. And then he gave him back to his father. Sometimes Jesus would command someone to do something that will bring about their healing. I want to give you a couple of examples of this. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 9 through 13, uh, it tells us that on one occasion, uh, Jesus entered into a synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And so he stretched it out and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. Another example of this is found in Matthew chapter 9. It tells us that some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a mat. And then he said to the para paralytic, get up, take up your mat, and go home. And the man got up and went home. What did Jesus do? He gave them a command, and as soon as they obeyed it, they were healed. So why did Jesus heal in so many different ways? I can think of two possible reasons. First of all, on each occasion, Jesus healed as the Spirit of God led him to. He was led by the Father and by the Spirit. God moves as he sees fit and he is too big for us to try to put him in a box. The second reason he did it this way is because he knew what we are like. If he healed the same way all the time, we would get stuck on the methodology and we would lose sight of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, when Jesus went back to the Father, he entrusted the church with the continuation of his ministry on earth. The Gospel of Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, as we can see, the ministry of, of the church included the ministry of healing. And I believe that as disciples walk with Jesus, they learn this great lesson. In order to see the power of God manifested, we must follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that is exactly what the early church did. They relied on the leading of the Spirit. I can think of two ways that the Spirit used the early church, the disciples, to heal that we have no record that Jesus ever did it that way. One example is by the Apostle Paul, and the other example is by the Apostle Peter. So let's look at Paul first. Uh, when we see the church operating in the gifts of healing, we find this in Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. And it tells us that God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick 
and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Let me ask you a question. Can God still heal in this way? Of course he can. The second new way that we see the church operating in the gift of healing is found in Acts chapter 5, verse 15. It says, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. See, the church was open to the Spirit of God moving in ways that they had never seen before. And we need to be open to that as well. Now let's consider one more thought. Is there anything that we can do uh, to put ourselves in a position to receive healing? And I believe the answer is yes. So let me share with you three scriptures and then I'm going to close. The first one is found in Exodus chapter 23, verses 25 and 26. Listen to what it says. Worship the Lord your God, and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you, and none will miscarry or be barren in your land, I will give you a full lifespan. Now, my friends, I want you to understand that God responds when his people worship him. In John chapter 4, Jesus tells us that the Father is seeking people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And when we really engage in worshiping the Lord, I believe it prepares our heart to receive from God. The second verse that I want to share with you is also found in the book of Exodus. It's Exodus chapter 15, verses 25 and 26. This is what it says. And there the Lord tested them and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. What is God asking us to do? to pay attention to what he is commanding us to do. Do you hear me this morning? God wants us to pay close attention to what he is commanding us to do. And he also wants us to walk in obedience to those commands. Healing is often the result of our doing this very thing. The third verse I want to share with you is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Very familiar verse. And it says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. I believe that the world in general has been in rebellion against God. We need to humble ourselves before him. And we need to acknowledge our sin and repent and turn from it. We need to seek the face of God in prayer like never before. If we do this, God will hear and he will forgive and he will heal our land. My friends, we stand in desperate need of all three of these things. Now you may remember that one of the ways that Jesus healed was to speak healing over someone 
that was not present at the time. Now I realize that I am not able to lay hands on any of you this morning. And I'm not able to anoint you with oil. But we can call on the name of the Lord together and by faith receive our healing. I am asking each one that needs God's healing touch, either for yourself or, or for someone else, and you believe that God is not only able, but he's also willing to heal. I, I want you to raise your hand with me uh, right now as we pray. Bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you to touch each one that needs healing this morning. Deliver them by your mighty power. Show yourself strong on their behalf. We approach the throne of grace and faith believing. Therefore, we receive healing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Please do two things for me before our time together comes to an end today. Please hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the page and you will be notified when the next video is available. And please also share this with at least one other person today. Well, thank you. Uh, God bless you. Uh, and we look forward to talking with you again.